Well, we're back down at the ocean. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully it's not too windy. But uh, we were here a week or two ago and uh, didn't get everything accomplished that we wanted to do that day. So we decided to finish up today. Nice Sunday drive down to uh, worship the Lord out in his creation. But I um, wanted to talk about a timely subject here. The subject of um, how to make it on one income. Uh, certainly uh, something a lot of people seem to have given up on. They think, oh, it's not possible. You can't live on one income. We do. Um, it's not possible to live on one income without suffering. See, that's the issue. Um, I will tell you right now, in all my years of preaching and going to church buildings and being around people and whatever else, I know the thing that causes every divorce, every marriage falls apart because of one thing, one word, pride. If there's pride in a relationship, the marriage has no chance. Pride goeth before destruction and then haughty spirit before a fall. Well, a lot of marriages fall. A lot of marriages fall apart because pride comes in. Uh, you're too embarrassed to drive an old beater car. Uh, you're too embarrassed to not live in the very best place or not eat the best foods or to wear secondhand clothing and whatever else. Uh, that's a big part of this whole thing. Um, I'm going to read a verse of scripture for you here so I can get to it. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 7. And it says, There is that maketh himself rich. Oh boy, it's windy. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. Okay? Um, there are people that try to make themselves rich, and yet they have nothing. They just live in perpetual debt they can't get out of. It's unpayable debt. It's a terrible way to live. Absolutely terrible. But then there's the opposite of that. And they're always just trying to play keep up with the Joneses. Their pride is too great to uh, be lowered enough to say, hey, we don't have much money. But then there's the opposite. The people that actually make decent money, but they live a very frugal life. They say, I don't need to impress anybody. Um, that's the smart way to live, right there. And um, I had the benefit of growing up with grandparents that went through the Great Depression. Both sets of my grandparents, both paternal and maternal grandparents, uh, lived through the Great Depression. And my father was born in the later part of the Great Depression. And um, they lived to, you know, they understood how to do things and, and to make, make it through and to survive. Um, I remember hearing the stories, you know, that when their shoes would wear out, they'd put old pieces of cardboard down in their shoe, you know, and, and uh, I remember my grandmother would say that, she said whenever it would rain it was terrible because your feet would get soaked inside your shoes if you had a hole in the bottom of the shoe from it just being worn through and, and they'd get two or three sizes bigger of the shoes, you know, and you'd put socks or rags or something down in the front part, you know, so it fit better <laughs> and then you can grow into it over, over the next year or two. Um, all kinds of tricks like that. I remember my uh, grandmother again telling the story of when she was younger, how that uh, her, they had this car, like the old 1920s, 1930s cars, and they had like the running boards on the side. And she said she remembered that they would go to a sawmill in the area and that they would get bags of sawdust and she would have to stand on those running boards her and one of her other siblings on the other side, you know, one on one side, one on the other, and they'd hold onto these bags of sawdust on the outside, and their parents would hold arm around them, and then they'd drive home that way. Uh, that would help supplement their coal stove. Um, so why would they do that? Uh, save money, be frugal. And you know something? When the Great Depression ended, my grandparents didn't just go out and head to Las Vegas and start gambling or something like that. No, they, uh, they kept with a lot of their very frugal standards. 
and they raised my parents that way and my parents raised me that way and a lot of you might not have had that opportunity so that's what this video is about out there it is hello to the brethren in England and Germany and wherever else over there in Europe um, <laughs> but I'll try not to get too out of breath I know people get so triggered by that um, but you know climbing up over rocks and everything else one hand and talking while walking I'm just supposed to be uh, never out of breath or something I guess but getting back to what I was trying to say here um, when you make yourself poor that's another way to say that would be to live below your means okay you make 50,000 a year we'll say but you live like you're making 30,000 well can't afford that right now uh, avoid debt okay that's uh, one of the biggest pieces of advice that I can possibly give anybody out there avoid debt very important uh, because when you go into debt what happens is you are paying two or three times the original purchase price because of the interest that you have to pay on that debt and what happens is you're always playing catch-up to that and what should have cost you five thousand dollars costs you fifteen thousand and so you're always having to make more money to pay off your debts and people have not learned to say no and just simply I don't need that right now or you know what let me save up my money for this and people have just gone out and I should be able to have it right now I can take my credit card I can go get a loan and and whatever bad idea very bad idea um, old timers what they would do they get an old jar you know again you don't have to go out and get all kinds of Tupperware and everything else just you know look for products a jar of pickles that you want or something and then say okay once those pickles are done I can use that jar that's a good sturdy jar we do that we don't buy um, a lot of Tupperware or anything else we wash our Ziploc bags oh we're cheap believe me uh, whoa, almost falling off this little wooden thing here um, but what you can do is you take an old pickle jar or any kind of jar glass jar or plastic doesn't matter and you put it someplace safe and then you just start saving up money cash and you say once we can take cash and put it into that little jar we want to buy something that's twelve hundred dollars or something well start saving get a little bit of money here and a little bit of money there maybe some change from when you're out shopping paying for things in cash that's the smart thing to do okay put some money in see that's what you do that's the smart way to do it don't say well I have to have it right now you don't understand I, I have to finance it with debt then you're going to be playing catch-up all right um, have one car that was another thing that my parents did growing up we had I remember when I was really little uh, we had one car and then later on we had the family car and a beater car the car that my father would take to work um, but a lot of times I remember when I was really little uh, you know we needed to go grocery shopping or whatever else and my mother would have to wait till my father got home from work that's just the way that it, that it was uh, they didn't have the money to be buying two cars and she gets to go shopping whenever she wants to no uh, that's another thing that you can do it saves a lot of money um, another thing that you can do is uh, early on when we got married my wife and I um, we had a I had a Ford Ranger pickup truck we drove all over the place out to Iowa a couple times and and then up here to Maine a number of times while we were buying property way back in 2013 and when we finally moved up here that was the only vehicle we had just one vehicle and then I eventually saved up enough money to get a Honda XR650 an older one some guy had it used he had had an accident or something car accident not an accident on the motorcycle thankfully and uh, he couldn't ride the motorcycle anymore so it was late winter going to be a while for, before summer and and uh, I saw it on Craigslist and went down made an offer he accepted and I had a motorcycle 
And there was actually a time when I had my uh, Ford Ranger, the starter, went out on it. And thankfully I was on a little bit of a hill and the Ranger was manual transmission. So I was able to bump start it. More on that here in a little bit. And so I was able to start it, get it back to the, you know, limp it back to the house that we had at the time. And then I hopped on my XR650. Well, I took the starter off, hopped on my XR650, rode to an auto parts place, got a new starter, came home, put the new st starter on. Truck did great. That's another thing, learn to work on your own vehicles. That's important. But the thing of bump starting, I'll tell you a little story about that. Um, when I was a teenager, um, my first couple of vehicles were manual transmission. And I remember, you know, we'd get to the, you'd go to the top of a hill and it's a steep hill going down on the road. And uh, I remember putting the vehicle in neutral. And I had this, you know, steering lock thing, you know, if the, it would get shut off, it would lock the steering wheel. So I couldn't shut the motor off. But, you know, some of the old cars, uh, I had a VW Beetle for a while, an old one. And those things, you could, they didn't have any kind of steering lock on some of the old models. And you could shut the motor off. Just coast down the hill, you know. You get down towards the bottom, you start slowing down and slowing down. Just uh, put it in gear and you know, put the clutch in, of course. Pop the clutch and and the tires would, you know, grip onto the road and and, and start it up again. You take off, just like nothing happened. It's kind of funny how that they actually have these vehicles, flex fuel and whatever else I think they they call them, and that the vehicles actually do that now when you stop at a red light. They shut off and they just kind of sit there and then then they start up again or whatever. Didn't need anything like that when I was young. You just put it in neutral and shut it off when you're out of light if you're trying to save money on gas. And you say, well, okay, I have to enter in here because that's just stupid. You're not going to save a lot of money on gas. All right, that's just dumb. You know, the, the amount that you would save is negligible. You know, you're not going to get a lot. Um, is the trail ended up there or something? Okay. Um, we'll have to do a little pass by here and go up to the very top and just go ahead and talk. What's going on? Um, let's go up and see. Alright, well, it, it ends? Well, we'll just keep traveling a little bit because the cove goes in this way. We'll just keep walking for a little while. Um, so anyhow, getting back to what I was saying here, but you know, there was all these little tricks that you could do that I learned growing up, ways to save a few pennies here and a few dollars here and, and whatever. And you know, yeah, somebody could come along and economists could come along and look at that and say, it doesn't make any sense, you know, you leave the room, you shut the light off, you you shut off the water when you're not using it, you, you know, all this stuff like that. You know, you go to take a shower and you you turn the water on and get in there and get wet, get the washcloth wet, and then you shut the water off and you soap up and then you rinse off after that. So you're not just standing there wasting water. And all those things, they might not really add up to a huge amount, but over a lifetime they do. Over a lifetime, it adds up to a whole lot. And so, um, don't lament and say, well, you know, I, uh, I wasn't raised this way and if I start now, I won't, it won't make any sense. And you know, don't talk yourself out of it. Make yourself poor so that you can have great riches. Um, that's an important thing. And if you can learn that and put it into practice, You'll go very far. And um, a lot of people, uh, they might start out with both people having to work, husband and wife having to work. A lot of people I know have done that just because of the area, area that you live in is very expensive or something like that. And again, I understand that, you know. And there are times if it's very expensive that you should leave, get out of that area. And, um, but sometimes people will start out, husband and wife both working. 
Well, the smart thing to do is to work your way up to the thing of um, being able to be on one income. And you can do that. Pretty neat trail going up here, I'll show you. It goes up there to the stairs. Luther's going up, there he goes. I want to get out of breath again, oh no. Please put the camera down. You're breathing heavy, it scares me. <laughs> oh, brother. But, um, again, build up to it. Um, you know, if you just broke your leg or something like that, or I remember I bruised my pelvis the one time in a logging accident, and it hurt, just taking a step hurt really bad. I would not have been able to come out here and hike this little trail here. Uh, it's not super difficult, but you know, it's a little challenging. But it would have been rough for me. Well, then I should never hike a trail again, right? No. What you do is you build up to it. Hike a little bit of a trail, and then do a little bit more and a little bit more until you can go on bigger hikes, climb mountains and things like that. Well, same thing with the thing of one income. Start doing what you can to save money. Cut out any kind of restaurants. You don't need to go to restaurants. You shouldn't trust them with your health anyhow. Uh, last time we were at a restaurant, my wife got really sick. Um, horrible pain and, I mean, uh, wishing she could throw up. It was bad. And uh, she was laying there, I remember, on the couch and she looked at me and she said, Would you please promise me one thing? I said, what's that? She said, don't ever take me to a restaurant again. <laughs> I said, okay, you got it. And that was, oh brother, um, hmm. Well, 2012. So, what is that? 12 years ago? Something like that. So, and I've kept my word. We haven't gone to one restaurant since then. I don't miss them. Um, I've learned about natural health and healing, and I've detoxed from the toxic lifestyle that I used to have, all the junk food and everything else. And now, if I even try to eat any kind of junk food, it instantly makes me sick. So, and I'm actually in very good shape. You know, even though I breathe heavy. But, um, another thing that you can do to save money, there are um, side incomes. My father at one time was working three different jobs. He was an engineer at Ford New Holland down in Pennsylvania. He was a 911 yeah, 9 dispatcher and he also drove school bus. Three different jobs. Three different streams of income. If you can work it out, do it. You know, you have to make these things happen in your younger years. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and because, you know, you get older, you can't do that stuff as much. But um, there have been ways that I've made money on the side, even in being, being in ministry. And, um, you know, when the donations come in and I'm able to continue um, in ministry and I don't have to think about the other streams of income then I get a lot of videos done. Different times where I'm not getting videos done that much it's because I'm having to provide in other ways but have multiple skills. Also extremely important as a man. You say what about the wife? Can the wife have some kind of an income? Well did the Proverbs 31 woman have a side income? Yes she did. So if she had one, don't you think other women can have a uh, side income? Absolutely. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. The issue with women being keepers at home is once a woman goes out into the career world, she runs into all sorts of danger. I don't know how many times I've heard from viewers or known of situations where um, uh, Women go out into the workforce and they end up having an affair or whatever else and marriage falls apart. It's terrible. And you want to stay in the home. The home is the place for the wife, according to the scriptures. 
Not according to secular society. According to secular society, well, women have just as much right to go after a career as man does. Um, well, you might have a right to, but it might not make that much sense. Just kind of turning around here so you can see the beautiful scene here up on this ridge. This big rock area where I'm standing. Uh, really blessed to be able to live here in the state of Maine. Had somebody write a comment and they said, uh, why would you move to a state with a liberal female governor and um, a liberal Democrat female governor? Well, when we moved back in 2013, slash 14, bought our first property in 2013, moved in 2014. When we bought our first property, uh, Governor LePage was a Republican. And Janet Mills that came in after him was the very first female governor of Maine. And uh, hopefully she will be the first and the last because she's been pretty terrible to the state. Um, you know, just a bunch of really stupid things that she stood for. Let me have to grip my, this rock here. Ugh. Can't exactly step down there with one foot with, uh, or without holding on to something. But come up with anything that you can. Again, um, living off grid, living in a tiny house. Um, you know, you might have to get really radical. Uh, live in a van for a while or something like that. Um, find ways to make a living. You know, unfortunately, again, the church buildings, you know, it's a, it's a business, it's a corporation, so you get the hireling, and he's there, and he's saying to the people, you know, you have to come here and you have to pay off the mortgage. And uh, church building people get really irritated with me when I say that, and they start to attack me and say I don't have a legitimate ministry and all this other stuff. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I have to have a 501c3 building to be legitimate, I guess, apparently, according to these people. But they, they need people to pay their debts. And that's not right. It really is wicked. Um... And again, you know, that's why a lot of these church buildings, they will not talk to you about what I'm saying right now. They will not advise people on how to save money because they don't want you to save money. They don't want you to be frugal. They have bills to pay, a large mortgage to pay off. And uh, so they can't be preaching debt-free living when they themselves are in debt. It doesn't really work, all right? Um, getting steep now but uh, hopefully the wind noise isn't too bad apologize if it is oh all right so hopefully that answers the question like I said if you want to see more about this and get into a lot more detail you can watch the other study that I did years ago um, where I get into the thing about the benefits of making yourself poor so that you can be rich. This dead tree here won't give way. <laughs> well, if I was going up this, I'd really be out of breath. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we go down through here, it's probably going to be windy and terrible, but... At least you get to see the ocean, a bunch of wind noise. Just really beautiful out here today. Out there, you see a little, a uh, couple little buoy looking little float things uh, from the lobster fishermen we are in Maine you know North Atlantic so they have to do their lobster fishing Whew. all right continue here There's some different types of galls out there. 
flying around. Are they still there? No, they flew off. Oh well, they're back that way. <laughs> um, and you know, what are we doing right now? We are on vacation. You say, that's not a very good vacation. Well, I didn't spend you know, thousands of dollars to do this. Just take little day trips. Uh, enjoy yourself, go hiking. Didn't cost anything to come here other than fuel, cost, cost and time. That's another thing, you know, I, we went to some decent places growing up, but uh, for the most part, we were going on little day trips. Go to museums, go to parks like this and hike around. Historic type of things. We'd go to Gettysburg quite a bit when I was a boy. And uh, because we weren't very far from it, uh, just to the east of Gettysburg in Lancaster County, PA. Um, but as I've said, old vehicles, have an old vehicle. When you can afford a second one, get a second one. Um, fix it if you can. Uh, get a dirt bike, motorcycle. Um, you know, Honda is coming out with motorcycles now. Uh, the Grom, and I think there's one called the Monkey. And these things are getting 120 to 150 miles per gallon. And you can get a Yamaha TW200. They're pretty easy to work on. And uh, they get about 80 miles per gallon. Even an XR650 like I was talking about. Um, those things get about 40 to 60 miles per gallon depending on how you're riding, you know, how much twisting of the wrist happens. <laughs> um, but they're easy to work on. Dual sports are probably one of the best bikes out there. Easy to work on. I've known guys that were fanatics. Had a friend years ago and uh, he would ride, he had a DR650. He'd ride it in the snow. <laughs> if it was snowing on the roads. He literally would ride it in the snow, just keep his feet down, you know. Saving money. And um, work on the bike himself didn't cost much for inspection or insurance or anything else and you'd save some serious money doing that um, there's a lot of techniques look for ways that you can save money make yourself poor so that you can have great riches okay so that is going to be it I think I'm going to uh, bring this video to an end here walking on these little skinny things again having to pay attention here so hopefully you've enjoyed the video hopefully I've challenged you to think about these things so that will be it thank you very much for watching and we will see you in upcoming videos